Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Before we proceed, have you downloaded your free copy of our children's illustrated biography of African legends yet? Please do so if you haven't. Don't forget, we owe our children a responsibility to expose them to our history early in life. Also, please help us to continue bringing you videos like this by supporting us through Patreon or buying me coffee. <laughs> please, please also subscribe, share and like our videos. Well, today's episode will be trying to look at some of the reasons why Africa will continue to remain poor so that we, we, we might be able to know where to channel our energies in, in order to bring about a uh, change for, for the continent. Now, in most African and Caribbean countries, colonialism has continued after independence through the entrenchment of new ruling elites who depend on the exploitation of their country's natural resources in collusion with foreign governments and multinationals to increase and protect their wealth and power at the expense of the majority of the citizens of their country. The truth is that the wholesale exploitation of resources during colonial times has not changed even in this so-called post-independence era. Since the colonial era, international companies like um, mines or oil companies and other extractive companies have continued to maintain power in independent African um, countries. Because most African countries rely almost solely on on, on resource revenue. Now, this um, dependence of a uh, government on um, on resource uh, revenue leads to corruption and oppression because politicians are not accountable to their people through a social contract based on taxation and representation which is what should actually be happening in, in, in proper democracies. An example is Angola, which earns a large chunk of its GDP from its natural resources. Between 2007 and 2010, a quarter of the country's income, which amounted to over 30 billion US dollars, disappeared from um, official accounts. However, the Angolan politicians and their allies have not been made accountable and will not tolerate any challenge from their public. Governments like the Angolan one and other African countries, which continue to oppress their citizens, have been able, able to hold on to power without needing the, the consent of their people. This is because they hold elections which they are cronies from the developed world who call themselves neutral observers endorse as free and fair. Resource-rich states in Africa will therefore continue to fail their citizens because resource dependency usually leads to repressive regimes which collude with foreign uh, prospectors. Another good example is the Democratic Republic of Congo, which holds unquantifiable natural resources. Now, let's ask ourselves, why has that country never been allowed to know peace? And I think we can illustrate why it has not been allowed to know peace with the um, example of um, the Katanga province in, in, in that country. Um, the citizens of Katanga uh, province might actually consider themselves cursed with vast natural wealth 
in the form of precious minerals like diamonds, gold, and tantalum. Now, during the reign of uh, Loren Kabila, and later that of his son, Katanga's mining industry boomed, but it did not, the boom did not benefit the majority of the local people. Instead, it only benefited a small elite group. However, the biggest portion of the wealth generated um, by the mining of uh, Katanga's resources went to international mining companies, which were licensed by the Kabilas. Now, when a group of local people tried to protest by taking over a mine that was operated by an, um, an Australian firm, Anvil Mining, Anvil Mining is the name of the firm, because of all the profits that um, was being cutted away uh, uh, from the prof province, the hundreds of protesters were wiped out for the simple reason of trying to protest uh, to protect their natural resources. Now, the combination of straggling wealth, rampant violence, and abject poverty in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo is no coincidence. It is part of a pattern of devastation that cuts across Africa. The global supply chain, which relies on cheap raw materials from Africa, is the bedrock of European wealth. And as such, this makes Western governments and their citizens complicit in the crimes around resource, um, uh, the crimes around resource extraction. Activists in the developed world who claim to be helping Africa to fight against poverty, uh, corrupt leaders, uh, climate change, uh, uh, and so on, are only paying lip service if they do not first challenge their governments to allow African countries manage their resources without interference. It's just simple logic. Of course, this will mean that citizens of the developed uh, uh, countries must be prepared to give up some of their luxur uh, some of their luxurious lifestyle because that lifestyle is being sustained on the backs of poor uh, poor citizens of uh, African continents and other developing parts of the world another colonial hangover is the continued presence and power of oil and mining firms. So long as the multinational companies continue to hold economic and political power in post-independence um, African um, uh, countries, then the yoke of colonial and modern exploitation will not be broken. Again, another instrument for keeping African countries poor, as illustrated by the Panama Papers, is of course offshore banking, which has created new opportunities for resource tycoons, politicians, and their foreign allies. Um, it al of course, it allows them to cover their tracks. Offshore funds have been used to launder questionable transactions and bribery. And, I'll, and, 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 and a good example is the case of the Israeli businessman, Dan Gettler, who, because of his close friendship with uh, the president of uh, the DRC, Joseph Kabila, was granted something close to a monopoly on exploiting the nation's diamonds. Of course, he became a billionaire overnight and siphoned uh, the money through offshore accounts in tax havens. Now, Bribery is also more difficult to trace because of the secrecy under which offshore banking operates. So I guess we need to spend a bit of time 
thinking of you know the kind of solutions that we can come up with to contend with them um, with this trend in Africa and I guess one solution would be that we must put Africa's natural resources to work for the common good of Africans we need to counteract the resource curse effect by building processing industries uh, such as diamond polishing rather than just exporting raw materials. Now, our countries also need to diversify their economies from depending solely on, on re resources towards manufacturing. Because so far, African countries have been coerced into compromising our sovereignty by embracing a world trading architecture with strict and unfavorable rules on uh, how tariffs are imposed. So we, we have been the losers in this current um, form of globalization and uh, so-called trade liberalization. And so we need to find ways to keep our resources and insist on proper tariffs to protect domestic industries. The secrecy of offshore financing should must be broken by having proper global public registries of companies and trusts. This would help us combat illicit resource deals. So long as the global economy still requires a huge supply of raw materials that originate in Africa, then the current destructive model will persist. So the countries that are rich in resources will continue to be poor and violence will persist. And so the responsibility for the plight of resource-dependent nations goes beyond traders and dictators. In essence, if you live in North America, Europe, or any other parts of the so-called developed world, and you want to really commit towards ending poverty in Africa, or even solving uh, climate problems, then you must first address the global economic system. There's no two ways about it. Challenge the draconian systems that are regulated from Western capitals. The nature of the global supply system is the heart of Africa's poverty. So this means that the crimes around resource extraction extends beyond African dictators and bad rulers. And it goes all the way to your comfortable homes in the developed world with your never-ending desire for the latest cars, electronic devices, mobile phones, and, and so on. They are interlinked. Thanks for watching. Please download your free copy of our children's books and support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Also, tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.